let's work on the concept of adjusted R square in this video. And before we explain the adjusted R square, let's understand the relationship between R square and what happens when we add more variables to the model. And we'll do so with an example. So suppose we have this first regression where we have the simple relationship between education and wage. And the R square in this case is 0 0.74, meaning that 74% of variation in the wages is explained by education. Now, suppose we have a second model, also the relationship between wage and education, but now we add the effect of IQ on wage. And we have here the adjusted R square, which is equal to 0 0.67. So 67% of the variation in the wages is explained by our model. Now, why do we have this adjusted R square? We have it because whenever we, ha we add variables to the model, our R square increases, whether the variables are significant or not. So let's write that down. When we add, when we add independent variables to our model, R square increases and we're going to explain it in a second. So when we add more variables, we estimate the coefficients beta 1 and beta 2. And recall that with OLS, we choose such coefficients in order to minimize the sum of squared residuals. So under OLS, we choose such a beta 1 in the sample and such a beta 2 in our regression line such that we minimize the sum of squared residuals. So we're minimizing the variation in the residual terms, sum of squared residuals. We're minimizing it. And by definition, if we have a coefficient that is significant, if we have a coefficient, sorry, not, not that is significant, if we have a coefficient that is different than zero, so an actual effect of IQ on wage, then by definition, that means that the OLS chose this coefficient to minimize the sum of squared residuals. By definition, it means that when we go from model one to model two, we have a lower variation in the residuals. So we have a better fit of the data. So by definition, that means the sum of squared of the residuals in the second model, in the second model is going to be less than the sum of squared residuals in the first model. And since we have less variation in the residuals in the second model, that means we have more variation explained by the regression. Because recall, recall the following, just to prove it even mathematically, to make sure R square is equal to the sum of squared differences explained by the model. So let's call this explained by the model relative to the sum of squared differences in total which is the same as one minus the sum of squared differences that are unexplained by the model. In other words, the sum of squared residuals because the residuals are what we cannot explain by the model. So it's one minus SSR divided by SST. Now, what, what happens here? If in our second model, we are reducing the sum of squared of the residuals, it means that this term over here is becoming smaller overall. When we subtract one minus a smaller number, the whole subtraction over here is increasing, meaning that the R square in the second model goes up if we do not control for this addition of the second variable. So the tendency of the R square is to increase when we add one more variable to the model. I hope this example proves it and it makes sense. Let's leave it like that for this video. In the next video, we'll see how do we have to control for the R square for this increase.